This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the publishing day to all of you, and it's it's been a while since we really got into some of the nuts and bolts of writing and and getting into and from you know how to write the book that only you can write. I think is really what we're going to be talking today um, about. With us is one of those gurus of pulling the book out, getting the words right, getting it transitioned and positioned. So Cynthia Morris coaches writers, artists, and entrepreneurs to get out of their own way so that they can finish a project that really matters to them. She guides individuals to develop the confidence and clarity they need to turn their gifts into books, businesses, and even art that can make a difference in the eyes, the ears, the viewing of anybody out there. She founded Original Impulse, where her one-on-one coaching Her workshops and her year-long mastermind group have been called a creative sanctuary for anyone who's ready to get rid of excuses and then to get the joy back into writing. So I'm tickled pink that she's with us today. She's got a brand spanking new book, The Busy Woman's Guide to Writing a World-Changing Book, that dives into the nitty-gritty of pulling our ideas into book form. And so... You know, fellas, don't worry about it, says women. Everything else applies. So with that, Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us today on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Thank you, Judith. It's great to be here talking with you. So why don't we just kind of jump into your book a little bit? Um, the, sure. It, I, how about I'll just say The Busy Person's Guide for right now. But it's but this Busy Woman's Guide to Writing a World-Changing Book. And I, I think every author um, and author-to-be, the newbie or every writer, would love, love to have that phrase come behind their name. They've created a world-changing book, don't you think? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, a lot of people write a book because they want to make a difference. So. That is one of the main motivations for doing the work to write a book. Yeah, I think so. You know, so so how in the world, uh, how can, how do you think a book can change the world? What's your experience there? Well, the way I think of a book is I think of it as a conversation leader. If you want to make a difference in your world, you you generally need to be leading some sort of conversation or contributing to a conversation. So a book is a great way to get what you care about, your expertise, your point of view, your story into a form that can then lead conversations, whether you are there having the conversation or not. So somebody reading your book is engaging with you on this topic. So I think that changes the world when we are able to take lead of a conversation and say, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I care about. This is the thing I want to contribute to the world. So that's, the first way I think of a book as a, a change agent. And the other thing that I've seen as a coach for people writing books is the, the person who's writing the book is absolutely changed. Their world is changed. They come out the other end of writing a book, not at all the same person they were when they went in. So even if it's just one person's world or the author, we can say the world has changed. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty exciting, I think. I mean, to to have that momentum, um, starting with that. So, what in in you've been coaching how many years? Twenty since nineteen ninety nine. We're we're in the decades now, right? Okay, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what has changed to you? What 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 changes have you seen come about in maybe the processing, uh, the the thinking? as well as the outcome, or, or have you seen any? 
Oh yeah, for years. sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, writing is such an interesting medium because it's got, it's gotten both easier to write. There are so many um, ways to write online and put our writing out there and to get support for writing. We can publish our own work much more easily and with a higher quality and a higher um, point of view on that people like self-publishing is no longer this weird thing that it was back in 1999. People weren't even talking about publishing their own books. So the gatekeeper was always there and you had to supplicate yourself to editors, um, editors at magazines and editors at publishing houses, agents in order to get your work heard. That is obviously very different. Now you can put anything out there at any time to any huge number of people. So that's great. Um, one of the, the, so a couple of the things that have detracted from our ability to write the downside of all of what we see online is that there's so much of it. There's so much more co content and media and things that we want to consume. And most of the people I know love the world are interested in the world. So love to you know, try to be up on all of these things and podcasts and books. So um, what that does is it, it, and I'm sure you've seen this, it diminishes our ability to focus and to switch into that, the kind of focused state of mind that we need to be able to write and that we need to be able to write a longer term project like a book. So those are some of the problems that I'm helping people overcome. How do I just get a focus? How do I sit down and write for long enough to, to get my thoughts out? Um, the other thing I've seen that's a real challenge, and again, this is the dark side of the speed of, the speed of light, the speed at which we are able to publish things, the speed at which we're able to communicate our ideas and get things out there, makes it seem like we should be able to write more quickly and get, get our words out. So people are often very frustrated that it takes them, they say, it took me the whole day to write that blog post. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I've been writing for 25 years and it still takes time to craft my, my thoughts and my ideas into something that I want to put out there. So I just, I've always seen, and this has not changed, that writing itself is a slow medium. And even when you have skill and you've been practicing for a long time, it will take time. And we're just, we're just not used to that anymore. We're frustrated by that. We're kind of angry that like, we can do it now and have our writing done now. So there's anything I would want for people is to rest assured that if it's taking longer than you think, that's normal. And there's no need to stress about that and give yourself extra grief about that. Just give yourself the space and the time it will take to write something that matters to you. So I, I think one of the things I, I'm hearing you say in that, because I agree with you, writing is easier in a lot of ways because there are tools to use to support you and checking on from grammar and et cetera. Um, and publishing is easier. It is, it actually is too polluted in my opinion that, I mean, I've always said when people say, when they say they have a book they want to write, is, you never know the stats. That the, the latest kind of the safe one is roughly 80% of the population says that they want to write a book. Have you heard any variable on that? I, I've not heard any different. That's the same. It's like 82%. That's the same statistic people have been yeah. quoting for years. Yeah, for, for I don't, years. I don't think it matters. Like, if they write the book, that's fine. I think it's what's interesting about that is the want to write the book. What is it that makes people want to write a book, and how do they tap into that to – either write the book or get their ideas out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are told they should write a book because they're a great storyteller and they don't, mm -hmm. it's not their idea. So they don't ever end up doing it. They never embrace it. Right. And, and they don't own and it. They don't own it. And then they don't know what to do if they do it. I mean, I've always said Cynthia that, that I, well, I think that's great that you want to write a book, but should you, or, or some may say, but maybe it, it's just to write it, whether you should publish it or not is another thing, um, because that's where I that's where I get into trouble because I see so much crap out there um, in the well, in the world. Yeah, what do you think is the solution for that? Well, I think go, we went from like gatekeeper to no gatekeeper. There, is there something yeah. in between or? 
I think there is something. I think that if you're going to write the book and your and your objective is to publish, um, I mean, a lot of people do write it and they sit in drawers. You know that, or they just share it with a few friends, and that's fine. But if you really want to expose yourself and you open up what I call the vulnerability window, because there are others out there waiting for that window to open for a variety of areas, um, that I I think that you have to really do some homework to find out what does it really take to publish and support a book. And part of that is, and you and I have both seen books that come out that you know bloody well there was no editing to it. You know, I'm sure you've seen that. And that part of that commitment, if you're going to write if you write a book and pull that, in that 80%, you're going to pull it out and you want to publish it, you know, are you going to go to the next step to have someone's eyes on it who is not your mother and your family member or your best friend and someone who will come in that's got some professional credibility behind them and really go over and do an edit before you before you go that next step? I think that's one of the first things you need to do. Yes, and I um, can imagine some reasons why people don't do that. It's hard for me to imagine that. I always want, it's such an opportunity when you have somebody professionally edit your work. It's a great mm-hmm. way to learn about the craft. It's a great mm-hmm. way to make sure that your writing's better. I think in the overall picture, everybody needs to know why they're doing it. What are they trying to achieve? Do they want to publish a book mm-hmm. just for their family to share? Or are they really trying to get something out to the larger world? And and it's so true what you're saying. Like the minute you go into the publishing zone of writing a book, oh, it's like the vulnerability barn door. It's a whole oh, yeah. other oh, man. process. Yeah. It's a whole other project. It becomes a unit. It becomes an item for sale, and you have to sort of dis, like unattach yourself from <laughs> that this was your and thing protected. that you produced. Yeah, and protect it. We're going to take a quick break. Cynthia Morris, the guru writing coach is with us. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author Use, the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop sizzle and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience and your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand nick selinger of nz graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts with over 20 years of experience in graphic design he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need such as posters banners postcards one sheets 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Hi, we are back with the fabulous Cynthia Morris, who has just published her next book called The Busy Woman's Guide to Writing a World-Changing Book that debuted uh, just a few weeks ago. And I would encourage all of you to pick up a copy. That is, if you want to be seriously successful as a writer and an author to be um, along the way. So Cynthia has been working with authors for over 20 years. That's a long time. And, and really creating books that are life-changing, which is what we just talked about here. So we were, and we were talking about just general and published. Did you want to add anything on to that, the life-changing impact, Cynthia, before we move on? Um, I think that the great thing about writing a book and putting something out there is you don't know what's going to happen. There are so many different things that could happen as a result of putting mm-hmm. a book into the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, it's great to have some intention and some uh, ideas about what you would like to happen and then see what happens. You have no idea whose life you're going to change from writing your book, but you certainly won't if you don't write it. So, And, and, and you know, and you don't know. I mean, you, your life could actually save someone's life. You just don't know. And, you know, you know Cynthia, you opened up, I, I love the phrase, the vulnerability barn door. I mean, I haven't used that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I talked about because I remember when my very first book came out in 1981, The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy, and I remember when that came out, and that that all of a sudden, it's like people are lurking around, almost ready to attack because that's what they like to do. I don't know if you've ever experienced that with anything, but there's always the nitpickers out there that want to do different things, and you just don't even realize it. Um, that that and then of course there's also fans who will love you and are so tickled pink to have discovered you. So do do you have actually any tips of how how to deal with that vulnerability factor? It's really tricky. Um, so that my thoughts on that are: the more you know why you're doing it and what's important about it, the more solid you can be about whatever else happens. Here's what's important to me. So I. There's an exercise in the book where I ask uh, writers to look at why are they writing this? What's important? Why must they write this book? And then to go through the writing and come up with one phrase or sentence that's a rallying cry, like this must get out there because of this reason. So that can help know why you're doing it so that if anything does come at you that isn't helpful necessarily or kind you can say well does that matter to me this this is why I'm doing it and I'm still going to continue with that Mm -hmm. the the other thing the thing that the reason I do what I do as a coach I'm a trained coach and a certified coach who works with writers so I'm using my coaching skills what I 
have seen with everybody I've worked with, and this is the, the reason I do this work, we are changed as a result of doing this work. We have to grow. We have to confront our insecurities. We have to confront our limitations. We have to see all the things that we might have been avoiding in other mm-hmm. ways. So mm-hmm. I take that as an opportunity. It's like, okay, I, I'm afraid of speaking up. Here's my book. Here's my chance to work with that fear, overcome that fear, and kind of change that story and become the better version of myself because I did – um, I, I felt the vulnerability and I went forward anyway. You are not going to be the same person that you were if you if you don't put it out there. Mm-hmm. You're not. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. Um, and and you not only that in, in the process of writing will you alter and change, but in the journey of once you have that book in hand and the people you meet and the experiences along the way. Um, will have another factor that comes into play. At least that's been my experience. For sure. You know, it's just, it's always been amazing. Well, let me, what happens, Cynthia, when you have lots of ideas? How, how do you narrow <laughs> down? <laughs> I, you know, you know, here I am. I'm, I'm, I am just publishing literally this month, my 37th book. I had wow. no, I, yeah, I know. I had no idea that number one, that I was ever going to write a book. And it was because of an incident situation where someone took some of my ideas and published them under his name. And the epiphany was, Hey, JV, if you don't start taking some of your own ideas, other people are going to take them. And that's how I wrote my first book, which was going to be the only book. No one told me the books bred. No one told me that, but they do breed. And so what if that, we have a lot of breeding ideas out here? Yeah. I love that that lit a fire in you to, um, to yeah. put your ideas out there because that, that is a motivator. Like that's, you know, I'm saying that all the time. I'm tired of somebody else um, taking my ideas. So um, I'm, I'm kind of curious about when you said 37 books and your first one was 1981. I know. Let me see if this, my theory is true. So since that first book you published in 81, and now the 37th book, how are you different as a result of writing those books? Oh, that's a great question. Well, um, there's, there's kind of this evolution. Number one, it took me through um, an evolution. Each, each book, um, each, uh, the, the books are like this series. They're kind of like a little family where I was writing mm. all financial and I stayed in. And then I was writing all about uh, relationships, toxic workplaces, and specifically why women undermine women. And that whole group came about. And then and then now I all I do is writing about publishing, although this is um, the book When God Says No is more of a memoir and how you deal with really bad stuff happening to you and how you can get out of it and, and move on and grow from it, actually. So that really was something that people have been hounding me to do. Um, because of my own life and things that I've gone through. So that was kind of like a, a kick in the butt demand. But the changing is that I know that my books have uh, financially saved people long before the Susie mm-hmm. Ormans came along. I know that the conflict resolution books have done amazing things, and I ended up going specifically in the healthcare workplace that have really dealt with some very bad situations and actually saved hospitals millions of dollars because of my steps and what to do. And I know that because of of a deal that I actually had a woman slip a note under, she heard me lecture, I was lecturing on one of my books up in Vancouver, Washington, and I actually have the story in in the When God Says No and tucked a, a note underneath my computer and just slipped out. And basically, she told that she told me she had nothing better to do the day, because that was going to be the last day of her life. Because and then she came, she she heard I was speaking on my book, and she decided, you know, I'll just go and waste my time here before I do the deed. And she just said, I just want you to know that I'm looking forward to living tomorrow. So you wow. know, you never know. So it's it you know you have the impact, but that also comes back to you to realize. You do make a difference. Your ideas, your thoughts. Now I'm a nonfiction writer. I, I don't have that gift, that wild 
badass thing that people can do and create up these really fun stories. I don't have that gift. I can work with them once they come forward, you know, work with me, you know, as the book shepherd, I can help them develop those. But the genesis, I'm always in awe of what some of these things people come up with in awe. And that, um, and that makes me a better person too, just because it expands my horizon. And now as where you're a coach and I'm a book coach, that what it does is it opens up a wide world of ideas and concepts that maybe I wouldn't have gone into that sphere, but, but because of what I do, I do. And that's all come because I just started writing. It was this kind of dominoing cascade that's moved forward. I love it. I hear so much confidence in you when you talk like you know that your books have made a difference. You know that your books have changed the world. And I think that not only contributes to the world, but to you. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I can make a difference here. I, my words have meaning. My words make an impact. And that, I mean, the things that you've done have rippled out so far and wide to so many people. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's what I want for everybody who has something they want to share. You, thank you for sharing that story. Um, that's, that's profound. I, I think you asked me about what do we do with our ideas? What do we do when we have so many ideas? Yeah. And yeah, I, we, it, it, we have, and let's think that we have about 90 seconds here before we take our next break. So let's, we can seed it and then come back to, and come back. Okay. But a lot of people have a, a boatload of ideas and I don't know where to start. So how do we fo- hone in on that? Yeah. Well, first of all, all of your ideas are not valuable. And because they're so energizing and fun, we get a lot of, um, juice from creative juice from ideas themselves, we conflate that to think that they're actually valuable and we need to do something about it. Ultimately, you have to look at what am I trying to do here in the world? Where do I want to make a difference? What book must be written like that just won't go away that I have to write? And you have to start with that. Start with the one that's most important to you. And then the other ideas, if they need to be books, they will come out later. But you have to start with one. And instead of holding all of them as valuable and equal value, you need to start somewhere. Publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged event. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. 
Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, we're back with Cynthia Morris, the author, about just the hot spanking off the press, The Busy Woman's Guide to Writing a World-Changing Book, which, you know, applies to everybody, any, any age, any culture, because there is just it is just peppered with exercises and insights and ahas that will really show which book really needs to surface, which is what we're talking about here. So let's let's you know, for Cynthia, the question to you is that what happens um, here if you've got all these crazy ideas and you think everyone is equally brilliant? How do you know which one should rise to the top and get your attention? That's a great question, and I'm sure there's lots of ways to look at that. I'll just walk us through an exercise that I have um, that that helps with this. So what you do is write down all those ideas into a list, however mm-hmm. many different books you want to write or things you want to write, mm-hmm. and then look through the list and ask yourself, what do I want to work on in the next year? So during this year, I want to work on, and then you make a check mark next to all of the things you want to work on in the year. And then you ask that question again for what do I want to work on for in the next six months and then the next three months and then the next month. And it's a sort of intuitive way or a backdoor way to get to the, the one that you most want to write. So when you see all the check marks, you can see, oh, there are five check marks next to this one project and only a couple next to the other projects. So you kind of suddenly see, oh, this is the one that I want to work on in the year and in the months coming, in the months that make up the year. Mm-hmm. So it kind of brings it more to, um, here's the one that just has the most juice for me. Here's the one that when I think about writing, that's the one I want to go to. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, that's a very, I love lists, you know, I, and this is, you know, this is one there you can write the list. I'm a big sticky note person. You know, I'll just have a little pad and I'll just start writing this brain dump, 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 and then start doing a rearrange because I'm so visual uh, when I'm moving stuff around. So. Absolutely. And especially, I love that you brought that up because writing a book the thing that the thing that's so difficult about it is it's really hard to hold the whole thing in your mind Mm -hmm. and it's even hard to hold it in one document a a table of contents or an outline is also difficult because you're going to be scrolling so having some way to just kind of see it let mapped out either with sticky notes or index cards or a whiteboard allows you to sort of step back and see the whole in ways that it's hard to online or on a computer I, I know. And the other thing is that um, they're portable. Sticky notes are very portable and you can move around. I mean, I can lay out an entire book. I actually would in in a class that I do is I just give them a little, fold, you know, the old fashioned folder 
um, and do it. And they get sticky notes of all. And I said, and I just show them how I laid out an entire book on one page. And it just, you yeah. start, and you're moving them around. You get your prioritizing, you know, you know, stories need to come in here or you're, you're going to do different sticky notes will be your activities or exercises. Um, and all you need is a couple of words. It's just a jiggle. I, I think what a lot of times authors get spooked, the writers evolving to authors get spooked, Cynthia, because they think of this massive project and they're not able to bite size it down. I mean, do you have any thoughts about that? That's true. And the, one of the big challenges people face is they think they, they're going to have to have the whole book figured out before they start writing. They oh, think they're going to yes. have it all mapped out. They're going to have the table of contents. They're going to know what is going to be in each one. And if you're writing a book proposal, yes, you need to sort of have that sorted out. A book proposal is a great way to get all of those questions answered. Mm -hmm. But if you're not writing a book proposal and you're just writing the book, the, the truth is you just have to get enough information, enough ideas about what chapters you might write or what items you might want to include. And then you have to plunge in and start writing your way because what happens is the book will change. It will morph. It has its own life. This is the strangest thing that I think it's, that happens when you're writing a book. It seems like you're in charge. The book actually meets you and has its own agenda. I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds woo-woo, but it's happened for every single person I've ever worked with, including yep. my own books. Yep. So I don't think that's fun, too. It's like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. have to have it all figured out to start writing. One of the, the biggest challenges I see us facing is we get stuck in that planning mode, the outlining, the brainstorming. And I think it's a comfortable place because it's almost like, you're working on the book, but you're really still sitting on the sidelines. You're not actually writing it. So people are like spend years doing a table of contents or sorting out the organizing of it. I'm like, do you need to just start writing? The writing mm -hmm. will lead you. The writing will help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've always said, I, you know, I see that more uh, really uh, with a lot of fiction writers. I've always asked them, at what stage did your characters start talking to you? When did they literally move through your hand and your pen and start taking over for you? And it always happens. It always happens. And, and Cynthia, I try to tell authors, they just need to think of your book as a puzzle and the pieces will start coming in and they're going to reposition until there's the right fit. And I think that that concept is hardest with individuals who have an engineering mentality um, and because they... They want to go step by step by step by step and not realizing there's several steps on the outside yeah. that are going to come in and make it complete. And it's going to be a big mess while you're writing it. And yes, if you can find the way, like what's fun about that, like not being in the mess, but sorting out that puzzle. Okay. So this isn't right. This needs to be moved around. As you said, like things need to be repositioned. Right. I think it's some, it's just letting go of, the control and, and what you just described, it's a total trust fall. I don't really know what I'm doing and I don't like that feeling, but I'm going to just trust that if I keep writing and organizing and sorting and, and getting help as needed, then it will come together. And it will. I, I've never seen it not um, in working with it. I mean, and, and you and I have both worked on a variety of books that have similarity, and we know that there's going to be some ex expectations that are going to go in it, but there's always these wonderful gems that come in from left field sometimes um, that right. just make it the best. <laughs> that just make it the best. Right. Yeah, and to let yourself um, be surprised by that, I think that's a mm -hmm. real treat and a gift. Yeah, it is a treat. Um, that no, it's like, it's like when I was doing, I do a, a lot of my early books, especially in the relationship side, had a lot of interviews in them, just a mm -hmm. lot of interviews. And uh, number one, I was always amazed at some of the awful things people did to each other, you know, and the undermining, the sabotaging, setting them up. I just was, how did they get these ideas to do these awful things? You know, and then, and then some kind, someone had a solution to just made me, tickled me. You know, that they came up with a way to deal with the, the bully in the, bull, you know, in the pulpit, so to speak. So, right. All right. So, so what, are, let me ask you this. What are the biggest challenges uh, they face 
when it comes to one, just getting the setup and two, coming through the stretch and getting it done. Yeah. Well, we've talked about some of the big ones, the choosing mm-hmm. which one to start with and mm-hmm. then staying with it, uh, staying committed to it. Often what will happen is people will choose a book and then within uh, a week, a matter of weeks, like a month, they'll realize it's the wrong book and they'll switch. And I think that's fine, but you can't keep doing that. You can't keep mm-hmm. writing the beginning of a book. And um, so committing to it is a big challenge. So committing to it when it gets confusing, as we've talked about, when you don't really see it coming together, um, when all of the other ideas and all of the new input seems much more exciting, it's hard. Like a lot of times people will want to switch again. Like I'm going to drop this project. So staying with it is really the hardest thing. What I want for people when they get into that place is to recommit, to take it as a commitment point. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Am I still committed to this? What about this is still important to me? I'm going to stay with it. So to not get worn down by the long-term nature of it. Mm-hmm. You going um, back, yeah, going back to on your ideas list. Okay, so what do I want to commit to in the next three months instead yeah, of abandoning? And, and, yeah. Right, and what's important about that for me? And really, what I, um, I have this process that I work with people where we look at their values, and which is a, just a, an average coaching strategy to just know what your values are and then live according to them. What I like to do is look at the themes or the things you're writing about. What are the topics or themes that that you want to put into writing? And you can pretty easily pair them to your values and see, oh, I want to write about community because community is what I'm all about. It's kind of my life's mission to be a a foster community. So that can help when when your ego gets uh, a little bruised because you're not doing a good job writing just to return to the, the deepest connection of why you're doing this. Okay. Um, and then I'm, I'm sure many people have found the last part of writing or any project, mm-hmm. putting up a website is really difficult. That's where a lot of the heavy emotional labor happens. That's when you want to make sure that you have support to stay with it. You want to have um, some tactics to deal with the inner critic that's going to get really large. You want to have a, a big screen to put up in that vulnerability window or barn door to help um, kind of hold your hand through that last bit. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're going to take our final break here. And I would love to, I mean, kissing on those emotions is important. Cynthia mentioned website. I'm going to encourage all of you. You've got to be starting that before you get your book finished. But we'll be right back with this is Cynthia Morris. And we're talking about how to get that book written. to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these the book shepherding concept is simple the publishing world is changing and so must you You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. 
We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, in our last segment with Cynthia Morris, we're really talking about how to write the book only, 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 only you, dear author, can write. Um, and doing that. And there's all kinds of emotional barricades and potholes and um, pitfalls that are going to get in your way. Uh, Cynthia, I have to ask you, what do you think is the number one one that gets in author's way? Well, um, in terms of not doing the writing itself, it's, it's thinking that you don't have something to say or that it's not original. So that stops people from even starting. But once you get in, I think it's the... Um, the confusion about how to organize the material and what to include and what to leave out. People can really write themselves in circles and get into a cul-de-sac and just kind of circle around. Um, and that often happens when they are trying to hang on too much to their preconceived notions of it versus just writing their way forward from what they've got. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know, when you read it- I was going to say, when you bring up the thing about, you know, what's what's original, that is the exact same question I had with a colleague this morning saying, I think I know what book it is that's surfacing, the one that's bubbling up on there. Right. And, and, and that's that's it. And I just said, but your unique ways, the way you do things, it's your stories, it's the humor you bring in. That's what makes it unique. That's what brings in the twist. Right. And that is the book that only you can write. And that is the thing that's most vulnerable. So yes, what right, vulnerability being, being able to be honest and um, open and share that in your writing. That's the number one thing. That's the number one part of the job to be a writer. You have to, if you care about something deeply, it's going to make you vulnerable to write about it. Mm-hmm. That's the nature of the job. If you can't take that, then you should not even you know, just know that that's what you're signing up for and, and finding ways to work with that, whether it's having support, having writing groups, um, learning to trust yourself. What happens on the other side of that vulnerability, finishing the book and putting it out there is an enormous amount of confidence and connection. Once you connect with other people about what you've put in your writing, your your ability to connect, your, your connecting with the human condition, it's just, it's just such a big benefit of doing it so <laughs> i believe there are rewards there are rewards in the in the labor in the, um, so being willing to do that i always look to the writers that i love who are incredibly vulnerable and and um like Anne lamott and mary carr people who are willing to tell their stories and willing to not look good mm-hmm. for the sake of writing a truthful and, and impactful book yeah i love annie lamont i i just think she's amazing um, yeah, with what she's done. All right. So, you know, you really you're tapping into the emotions and we've talked about kind of what they get in the way. So what do you, you know, as a as a book coach or writing coach, what do you, you do? You have, do you have certain exercises or things that you tips you do suggest for authors on how to cope with all this stuff that bubbles up and, and throws out the yeah. blocks? Yeah, it's a lot of coaching conversation. So what, you know, just starting with what are you feeling? What, what's coming up? 
What do you notice? Um, what impact is that having on you? If it's inner critic stuff, there's there's a lot of exercises I do around that. Um, what's true? What's true about that? Looking at how do you make your inner critic an ally? So mm-hmm. one of the fun things that we do is writing down, um, doing like a character sketch of the inner critic. Who is this voice? Let's bring it on stage. What does it look like? What does it wear? What does it say? What's what's its role in your life? And then two questions that um, you want to write answers to. You ask the inner critic, what do you want for me? And then how can you help me? And when you write write all of these answers down, you don't just think about it, the inner critic can become an ally. And you can see like, oh, here's what's important to that part of me. That part of me really never wants to speak up at all. So um, I can ask its help by knowing when, like helping me define some boundaries around what I want to say before I just like splash it all out there. So in this way, you really work with those fears and concerns as, as a as a relationship, as a proactive relationship, as something you design with the inner critic. So that's one way. Um, the free writing method is the way that I teach everybody to write and get get into what they want to write, get into their voice, and get get clarity on issues like that. So I would often recommend somebody to write about that. So some fear comes up or an emotion comes up, we talk it through, we work through it, and then they can explore it further through writing so that's mm-hmm. where writing is it's a power tool we can use it mm-hmm. to you know craft our material but also to craft our relationship with our writing and our writer self mm-hmm. Cynthia I have a question about you know I, I I I have a couple of friends who are actually writing coaches also and they are firm believers that sometimes you have to you just have to get off the computer and write right the old-fashioned writing with pen in hand and and just let it go with with long hand. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, that may be true. You know, that may be true for a lot of people. What I do in my work is really helping each person define their own process and their own standards. So that may mm-hmm. work for somebody that may not. Mm-hmm. Of course, I have seen a lot of things that work, definitely getting some distance from the computer, going for a walk. So <laughs> when I'm working with somebody, by the end of our time together, they they know from their own experience what works for them, and they've been practicing it and refining it so that they can go and write anything because they know they know their writer self. Um, I love getting away from the computer to write, and that's what I do all my personal writing in a journal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and pull from that. Yeah, and 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 make it come alive. I mean, I. I, I do a lot of writing on the side. In fact, I, I was telling my grandson, as you know, that they've uh, taught in many, they've stopped teaching kids how to do cursive. Long, I don't know when that stopped, but some of the schools are now picking it up again. And I'm even seeing uh, some corporations and the work doing, making people go back to actually physically writing notes and off yeah. the computer. Yeah. Yeah. You process things completely differently when you're, when you're writing than when you're typing. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, and I see that too. So I'm, I'm one of those um, carrying. I carry a pad around with me. <laughs> yep. I just. I think notes. You know, to the point of stepping away and writing by hand. I think sometimes that can help with um, that trust and the the truth telling. When you're typing on your computer, you could just like move a hand, and suddenly your thing is out in the world. Like boom! Ooh, I didn't mean to click that. So that might definitely hinder our ability to just relax and and write honestly and write what we want. Stepping away and writing with um, a notebook removes that. It gives you some a little bit more privacy and a little bit more distance between you and the public. Mm hmm. And and um, it, it just does make a difference. So I my grandson is going on a vacation. They're on a, a cruise thing, and I said, you know that workbook I gave you on how to write cursive. Why don't you take it with you and practice? Because I said, once you know how to write cursive, it's a lot faster in printing. So, and then you can read the notes I cool. send you. You know, because they nice. can't read. <laughs> they can't read on, on this. So it's it's crazy. 
All right. So um, that, this, you know, as we wrap up our last few minutes, what are some of the surprises you've seen? You know, what, what surprises you about writing, just writing in general and just writing books? You know, I love how writing is such a power tool and can do so many things for us that can really help us know who we are and what we care about, can help communicate that to others. So, you know, if you have the impulse to write and you've been sitting on the sidelines, I say pick up the pen or the keyboard and give it a try. Because what I've seen that has surprised me and that I think is so cool is you become someone different and perhaps even better as a result of writing. If you have the impulse to write and you're finally getting it out, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel like you're putting your gifts to use. Um, so in terms of writing a book, the thing that surprised me is the, what we talked about earlier is how the book, every book has its own life and you yeah. are sort of in just engaging with it and in relationship with it. You are not the, the master or the controller or the expert. And I think the sooner you can kind of surrender to being in relationship with the book and seeing how it emerges, the more you enjoy it. So that's, that's something I would not have expected. Um, I'm a pretty practical person and I would not have expected that the book kind of makes itself with you. <laughs> I know. And it's, that's exciting. Cynthia, how do people get a hold of you? I mean, if, if, or, you know, tell us about, do you have a blog besides getting everyone do, uh, get, do it's a live on Amazon. Just go get it. The busy woman's guide to writing a world changing book. It will make a difference in how you think, how you move forward. Um, and put together your current book or your next book. All right, so I'm going to say that. So how do people Thank find you? you? Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Um, my website is originalimpulse.com, and that's where you can find my blog and sign up for my newsletter that I've been publishing since 2001, Inspiration for Writers and Creative People. Um, and you can find out all about everything I'm doing there at originalimpulse.com. All right, so that's just very. Um, you could, you should be all able to spell that. Original impulse. That's that's not plural. Impulse. dot com. Um, I would recommend you definitely sign up for Cynthia Morris's blog and follow that because th that will be kind of like your encouragement goose um, that you get and take advantage of that. So that would be very very cool to have. And um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I would just recommend that. All right, we've got 30 seconds. Any last-minute tip you want to give, and we'll be off. When you're facing any kind of insecurity or struggle, always go back to what do you love about writing or what do you love about the thing that you want to communicate. Coming from that place of love and here's what gets me excited is going to be so much better and more effective than trying to harangue or discipline or abuse yourself into doing the writing. So always go back to the love. All right. So I love that. It's always about love. All right, everyone. Happy publishing. Happy writing. Happy writing. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. We'll be with you next week. Guide to Book Publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets, and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network. Thank you.